Hello, I hope this video finds you well. Tonight we're going to look at cat dog from string 2 and this is the Python solution. The problem states return true if the string cat and dog appear the same number of times in the given string. And we look at the first example, we see cat dog get true because we see there's cat once and dog once. Cat cat returns false because there's two cats but no dogs. And in this third example we get true because we can count that there's one case of cat and one case of dog. I'm going to go through this three different ways. Um, the first way is really leveraging um, built-in string methods. And understanding how to use these built-in methods is really useful because it allows you to do problems really quickly. Now what we can do is we can use the count function. So if I do return str.count cat and I just run, what we get is we get the number of times that cat appears in every string. So this is an example of an instance function because I need to invoke it with an actual instance of a string. Who am I counting? I'm counting str. And then what am I counting? I'm counting the argument that's passed in. And in this case, it's cat. So all I have to do is say return if str.countcat is equivalent to str.countdog. And essentially what this is doing is saying, do I get the same number of cats as I do dogs? And there it is. Nice approach and really useful in many ways. Okay, our second approach we're gonna look at is gonna fall back on this, this idea of counting the number of instances of a, of a substring using a loop, and this is a really important technique to understand. Now, before we begin, I kind of made up my own example here, and we see that we have this string cat AAA dog, and we know this should return true, and we see that this is a length of nine. And so the first thing I wanna do is I wanna say, all right, what is the length of my reading frame? And that's three. And the reason why, or I'll just write the reading frame is three. And again, the reason it's three is because both of the words we're looking for have a length of three. This problem could be a little more interesting if the two words were of different length. And what I'm going to do is highlight the first reading frame I have to have to highlight and apply the substring to that and the last one. So we see our first one has the substring. 0 to 3. And remember, inclusive exclusive. If I take 3 minus 0, I get 3, and that gives me the length of the substring. And the last reading frame I want is right here. And in this case, it's going to go from index 6 to 9. And we see that this is 9 minus 6, which gives me 3, and that works. So what I need to do is I need to make a loop that's going to go from i equals 0 to i equals 6. So what we're going to do is we're going to make two counts. We're going to make count dog, or let's go dog count equals zero, and we're going to say cat count that equals zero. These are the variables that are just going to keep track of how many times we see cat or dog. And I'm going to return dog count is equivalent to cat count. So if I just hit go now, I'll get true every time because they're both zero. Now let's write this loop. So I'm going to write four i in range, and we see that we're going to start at zero. And the question now comes is, how far do we go? Well, in this case, we want to go as long as i is less than 7. So for now, in the concrete case, I'm just going to put a 7 there, and I'm going to increment by 1. And all I'm going to do is say, if str at i, i plus 3, is equivalent to cat, we are going to say cat count equals cat count plus 1. And if str at i, i plus 3 is equivalent to dog, we're going to say dog count equals dog count plus 1. And you probably notice a problem here right away, which is perfectly true, is that I've actually set the limits of my loop for this specific case. So if I hit go, I get an invalid syntax on line 23, which is not what I was planning at all. So let me just find that quickly. And of course, I've just missed that colon there. So I hit go. And we see it runs, but it doesn't run correctly. And the reason is because I haven't related this ending condition to the actual length of the string. So if I know I wanted to reach 7, the question is, how does 7 relate to 9? Well, that's going to be the length of str minus 2. And I hit go, and there it is. A little trick, if you want to help remember this, is that it's always going to be the length of str minus the substring length 
or the reading frame length, let's say reading frame length minus one. And this should be in brackets to make this mathematically correct. Right? Because if the reading frame length here is three, three minus one is two, so they're going to get minus two. All right, let's look at our last solution here. So our last way solution uses this uh, string collapsing or a replace trick. I talked about this last class or last video. Um, it's really useful, but again, you have to be really cautious when you use it. So what we're going to do is we're going to take, we're going to make two new strings. We're going to make a no cat string, and that's going to be str.replace, and we're going to replace all the cats with an empty string. And then I'm going to make a no dog string, and that's going to be str.replace, and I'm going to replace all of the dogs again with an empty string. What this does is it takes any time I see cat, and then it puts an empty string, so the string kind of collapses on itself. So since we've replaced all the cats and have this new string and replaced all the dogs and they're the same length, if the length of the resulting string is the same, we've removed the same amount. So I can return no cat equivalent to no dog. Oh, and I have a little mistake. Let's pause this and find it. Can you see where I made my mistake? It's one of those ones that's glaringly obvious. We want to turn if the length of no cat is equivalent to the length of no dog. And there it is. So I hope this video helped. All three of these approaches are really great. I can't stress this enough. If you're a beginning programmer, um, don't get kind of sucked into these little shortcuts. They're great, but make sure you understand how to write a loop. It's going to make a lot of work you do later a lot easier. And as always, if you have any questions, just reach out.